This is another oh, one of no. those 27 part DC Comics annual oh, events boy. that for my money is kind of not a bad idea for how you do events. Hmm. You got uh, annuals, so you charge more for the book. It doesn't interfere with anyone else's book. And you got two self-titled issues of the book, mm -hmm. right? At the very least, unlike Armageddon 2001 or even Bloodlines, which only had one issue called Bloodlines, the last one was called Bloodbath. Right. I think. <laughs> no, th we are thinking about it more than they ever did. Who is Eclipse? Who is Eclipse? I think we've talked about him, but I don't remember. We have, but there's Something never been any him. good reason to talk about him. Yeah. And uh, a few people tried to capitalize on the popularity of uh, the TV Stargirl series because Eclipso appeared in that show. Uh. Uh, pff, I'm so glad it worked out for them. <laughs> but uh, Eclipso is a character who was invented, if you can imagine, in 1963, and he was stupid. <laughs> and no one had any regard for him. Uh, and still doesn't today. Uh, with the notable exception of Joshua Williamson, who used him in the Justice League versus Suicide Squad comic, but he only shows up in the 11th hour as kind of like a fun twist. It's a really cool moment that is actually only made possible because of Eclipso, the darkness within, because this is the only other time that Eclipso is relevant. We actually talked about a little bit in Justice League, Another Nail. Mm -hmm. where he like is skulking in the shadows. He looks like a purple elf. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, I'm a villain too. Yup. Yeah, I remember that's that. That's him. He's, he doesn't play a role. Eclipso is forever and the rest. Like he is that <laughs> kind of villain. Okay, so let's talk about Eclipso's origins before we get into his massive biggest event, the most popular he's ever been How ever. How do we do this? What Don't worry, we, the same way this? we did the last two. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah. skip a lot of it. Yeah. I guess. Now we'll cover them all, I promise you. We will touch upon every single issue that is here. Oh boy. That's insane. Yeah. This must have been awkward to stock. It is. Oh no, I've seen collectors complain endlessly about the first issue of Eclipse of the Darkness Within with its gimmickry, uh, with a actual black diamond that Eclipso wields or capitalizes on its use embedded in the first issue. Is that like where his powers come from? Kind of, yeah. So, okay, Eclipso. In 63, he's invented and he's dumb. <laughs> the idea is that there's this scientist named Bruce Gordon, and he's a solar scientist. And he is somehow uh, transformed into Eclipso. The idea is that he gets <laughs> scratched by one of these evil black diamonds. And the spirit of from? Eclipso, originally he was just kind of a Jekyll and Hyde tech character. Ah. This, this poor dude is plagued by this evil spirit called Eclipso. And when Eclipso comes out, Eclipso does unspeakable things, and it's ironic because he's a solar scientist, and only when he is exposed to sunlight can Eclipso be defeated, which includes his girlfriend, Mona. Uh, also, she's like his partner, so it's really inappropriate. And uh, there's a scientist who's also her father, and they all work together in this like uncomfortable relationship. <laughs> Uh, and if I had a nickel for every time that a superhero was developed in which he went on archaeological digs with his girlfriend and their dad, I'd have two nickels. <laughs> but it'd still be weird that they did it twice. What uh, was the other one? Moon Knight. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? Now, that being said, at least with Moon Knight, they had the good sense to kill off the dad so that he's not like, hey... Are you guys doing science in there or are you banging my daughter again? Because that's what you do here. Still science. Yep. It's anatomy. <laughs> Clips was a bad guy. Yes. And that's the thing is that yeah. it's not like Bruce Gordon wielded Mephisto. It wasn't like, well, you know, he's like the spirit of vengeance. Although he is the spirit of vengeance though. Uh, so uh, he was nothing originally. But why does he have a whole like family? That sounds like a superhero. Someone who's got well, these side characters that, who has like a book. Oh, I know. Appear in. Yeah. Was there an Eclipso book? There will be after this, but no. No, he okay. appeared in a book called like House of Secrets, which is not even his own book. It's oh. just a bunch of things happened, okay. but also he persisted. And when he persisted, they were like, oh, and also his host is Bruce Gordon and his girlfriend is Mona and the dad is a scientist. You know, they gotta do all that. They gotta remind you of all, all this stuff. Does she know that he's Eclipso? She does. Okay. And she helps him battle him. Yeah. It's, who cool. cares? Yeah, that's how great that premise is. And then uh, in the 90s, they went, that sucks. Yeah. Let's retcon the crap out of him. 
And so they do. And the retcon is kind of fun, and that's why I'm like, oh, okay, Eclipse of the Darkness Within? Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, no one ever did anything of note with him afterwards. Like, they elevated Eclipso only to then give him his own solo series, which lasted way too many issues, over 10, and then subsequently was canceled and we never saw him again. I mean, right. we did see him again, but only when it was like, appropriate to show a menagerie of supervillains, one of which was Eclipso. Yeah, like, right. hey, look at him. Like, oh no, part of it. Well. and Eclipso's there. That's how you know it's serious Remember business. Remember Eclipso? Remember Eclipso? He had that big event a couple of years ago. But never mind that, because now we got to deal with Xenomorph ripoffs. And now they're going to suck your spinal fluid. Oh, that's way scarier and more hardcore than Eclipso. When they do the retcon, it's like, cool. Good idea, keep going, change what he looks like. <laughs> no! No! I mean, that's at least- the best part. And th that's the worst is that of course, because this is like a 27 part event, uh, his design will shift from what they're trying to go for, which is more like a ripped, scarier Eclipso. Mm -hmm. But then also some people go, Eclipso, got it. And they'll put him in his silly ass costume from the 60s. Right, like, I know what he looks like. I got yeah, the character model for him. Got it. <laughs> he's, he's a stupid oh cosmic court no, no, oh. So apparently in the real, in the retcon for Eclipso, the post-crisis origin for Eclipso, uh -huh. he was God's wrath. He was the spirit of vengeance. Nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> God's wrath? <laughs> yeah, the specter, man. Yeah, That's but he's a bad guy. That's a thing you were totally fine with when he's green. Yeah, but he's a bad guy. Well, yeah, he went to bad. He, I mean, look, does God's wrath sound good to you? You know what I mean? Okay, so does he Is it only... God good? I mean, kind of. Does Would he... you say that slaughtering the firstborn of Egypt is a good thing? <sighs> so, he's a complicated character, let's put it that way. But okay, God's a complicated character, but I thought in the DC universe, God was like, you know, God. He's the presence, which is a, which allows us to be many things. Right. But Eclipso the was the spirit of vengeance and then gets kicked out because he's shitty. I just feel like this they just guy explain it. is a chump. He should not be able to be God's wrath. Well, and that's why he got fired. <laughs> right. And then replaced by the specter. Oh, He's like, wait. Oh, I see. So he comes up with the specter. That is to say God. He's retconned to have always been God's wrath. Yes. And then gets fired and then becomes the Eclipso that we know. Yes, but even then he can't be the one from 63 because we already rebooted the universe. Oh, so okay. we don't have to worry There's about that. More. But uh, God imprisons him in a giant black diamond known as the Heart of Darkness. What's funny about that is that for whatever reason, God picked a specific black diamond and didn't conjure one from nothing. It came from Apocalypse, where it was used for evil. I guess because it's an entity of such great power and evil, it was such a totem of evil and power that it only could contain the essence of Eclipso. So the Heart of Darkness contains Eclipso, formerly the Spirit of Vengeance, and then God leaves it conveniently on Earth. Okay. Even though, takes, it takes it, even though it was on Apocalypse. Even though it was on And puts it on Earth. Yes. You know what? This belongs over here. You know what? It should go here. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever wake up and just be like, hey, where'd my hey, diamond go? Where's my diamond? Go? <laughs> Super evil diamond. That yeah, really I, useful I feel like me. I feel like Darkseid would ask where that was. I feel like there'd be an audit. <laughs> then, in Eclipse of the Darkness Within, the first issue, we retcon how all of the Eclipso stuff happened. And as we know Eclipso, he has diamonds like this, but that's not a big diamond. No, that he would be trapped. That's, that's a, a tiny one. diamond. Right. How'd it get so tiny? In 1890, we established that Joseph Conrad, who wrote Heart of Darkness, yeah, he was shadowing an actual Indiana Jones-esque adventurer uh, through the Congo. Mm. And so he gets cold feet and leaves, just makes up the rest for his book. And meanwhile, what actually happens is this adventurer goes into this cave and finds the Heart of Darkness. Now, of course, this thing is evil, and if you have a Eclipso diamond in your possession, Eclipso himself can use that diamond to possess you and make you do terrible things, but only if you have anger in your heart at that given moment, because of course, Eclipso used these tiny diamonds to manipulate people. Like if you get possession of a black diamond, you are now possessed by uh, Eclipso. And or you it, could be, you could be under their thrall. Yes, and if you have like great constitution, and if you don't feel anger in your heart, uh, it's less easy for him to take over, but you probably are going to be taken over. Yeah, it's not a situation where like the second you have it, you're just under his control the entire time. No, but if so it's, it's a, like the rings of power. Yes. That uh, corrupts you over time. Exactly, or immediately. 
Right. You know, especially if it's really big, like this. So the adventurer takes it, and then he goes back to London in 1891 and brings it to a moonstone shop and then asks the jeweler to break the heart of darkness into a thousand pieces. Oh. And then, of course, this is all done by the bidding of Eclipso through the archaeologist to spread all of Eclipso's influence over the world. Now, this is not Scientology, where like, and that's why we feel bad and we are upset. <laughs> this is the all you need to do of all is just depression. <laughs> <laughs> it's Eclipso's fault. No. Oh, no. it's the secret ingredient in Coca Cola. That's right. We don't see Eclipso like doing anything, but we have to take at face value that Eclipso is in the diamond and that he is manipulating forces around the diamond's influence. Yeah. Oh yeah, so the guy who has the diamond and brings it to the guy isn't doing it of his own volition. No, right. he is he, he is Eclipso. influenced by Eclipso. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And uh, of course, everyone who is possessed by Eclipso is an extension of Eclipso. The issue is, uh, the more people who are uh, possessed by Eclipso, the more uh, deluded Eclipso becomes. And so Eclipso like has to really force it and he has to work harder to control everybody. Uh, but that doesn't come up until later. Uh, the point being is Eclipso basically facilitated his own uh, you know, propagation throughout mm -hmm. the DC universe, or at least throughout Earth itself. Right. Uh, but then we cut to now, which is to say 32 years ago. So on the dark side of the moon is a castle or a cathedral that was conjured by Eclipso that no one's noticed that Eclipso built and also lives in, but also it's an extension of himself. So it's kind of not unlike a Green Lantern construct, but you don't need a lantern or a diamond in order to make it. It's just Eclipse like, is just that power. He made it and it just exists now. Yeah, and if you like break it, you hurt him. Oh, oh okay. So he's like intrinsically connected to it. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, in order to explain more about that, we what? have to go back. Oh, oh no. To the Starman series. What? In which Starman, who is Starman? Okay, so Starman <laughs> is also retconned to be connected to Eclipso. Oh. So that this event can happen uh, because we got to get Starman working. <laughs> uh, so Starman <laughs> is actually a legacy character. There's been a few Starmen. This is the 80s to 90s Starman. And this Starman was zapped by like a space laser. And the space laser hits him and gives him fantastic powers. And those fantastic powers are he can change shape and he can fly and he's durable and all the standard superhero crap. Starman, of course, has his own cadre of characters that we're not gonna get into. The point being that there was a prelude to the Eclipso event, which was its own event that was, I think, three to five months before Eclipse of the Darkness Within that had Eclipso in it and basically said that Eclipso is the reason why Starman has his powers. That Eclipso himself, sometime in his long history, uh, manipulated the satellite dish or whatever that zapped Starman, and so now Starman's owed his powers to Eclipso. Sure. In no way does he feel indebted to him, but rather uh, Eclipso wanted Starman to have his fantastic ability so that he could one day possess him. That was not the intent, I think, in the Starman series <laughs> that preceded this, but it is carried over in the Eclipse of Darkness Within event. Okay, so, so it was established in Starman, the connection between them. Exactly, okay. and that was also a full-on retcon of Starman's origins mm -hmm. within his own book. Right. Uh, in that story, Lobo is dispatched because it's 1991, uh -huh. and he is sent to kill Eclipso because Eclipso was successful in his attempts to battle and humiliate the Lords of Chaos, <laughs> which includes people like the Phantom Stranger. So because the Lords of Chaos, who sound like they would be above this, literally pull out a contract against Eclipso by hiring the main man to give him a wedgie. <laughs> and so Lobo goes out to kill or at least punch Eclipso, Starman becomes involved, and it all wraps up on the moon. At no point do they establish the cathedral or anything, but in any uh, meta text you'll read about Eclipse of the Darkness Within, they will say it is preceded by these four issues. Uh, they are not. Right. Well, yeah, we gotta make them relevant. Yeah, before we, we remind you he exists. Well, and also he happened to be in a story with the Lords of Chaos, which who the hell read that? Right. So I gotta remind you in this Starman book, which of course is way more popular than Phantom Stranger's vehicle. Uh. Eclipso made deal with Lords of Chaos and failed. 
They want him to suffer. Yes, that's right. So, oh, and that's also how we get Bruce Gordon in the story. Or at least yeah, remind Bruce, you that he exists. Bruce because, is talking instead of Eclipso at that point. Actually, he isn't. Uh, Bruce Gordon, of course, being the vessel for Eclipso. They, they establish the like evil, stupid, mustache twirling, though he has no mustache, villain of Eclipso being the dark half of Bruce Gordon in the Starman book. He hasn't become, or at least we haven't established that he is actually like this evil, malevolent, enduring force. Um, That's but weird. In that event that, but in that interaction that Ben's describing, actually Eclipso is pretending to let Bruce take over and tell people about what's going on so oh. that uh, he can get his nefarious ends uh, uh, accomplished. He doesn't, but maybe he does because he has this big event three months later. <laughs> so anyway, we establish that Bruce Gordon's a thing, he's back, and Ecl he thinks Eclipso's been defeated, but also he doesn't. Uh, Lobo's involved, and he is aware of Eclipso now. But we also have to establish that Eclipso can be defeated using sunlight. Not just waiting for the sun to come up, but also right. by using a flashlight that has to also have derived its powers from the sun. You can't like what use Duracell batteries. <laughs> it has to be a solar powered flashlight or a device that literally uses the power of the sun to shoot light. All right, so not like if it had solar cells on it. No, it has if it has like... solar cells, that's okay. What? It still converts it into regular light though. Yeah, but it used solar energy to yeah, do it. But it just converts it to electricity, which is, there's no difference in electricity I know. from a solar panel versus well, any other source. That's true. But it's also a plot point in the story. Okay. The electric, the, the, the light bulb, which is emitting the light, yes. knows where the energy that's I don't think going it's the, into it Well, the light from, bulb doesn't know, but Eclipso it does. produces <laughs> the light in a different way, yes. such that it impacts Eclipso. Well, it a has lot. a different source. Yes. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, well, but apparently but it does. for magic it Cosmically does. Cosmically it does. <laughs> I was going to say like- it's a regular like, flashlight, right? That would be like if I derived my energy from the sun and so I punched Eclipse, so I'd be much more powerful. Like, no. Yeah, Superman could do that. Well, and he should, and he does fear and want to defeat Superman almost immediately, but it has nothing to do with the fact that he's solar power. Duh. Even though solar energy is like a main point to this event, such that Bruce Gordon is a solar scientist and his, of course, former host or current and once and future host. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you don't have to read these. <laughs> Long story short, Long story those are short, unnecessary. Those are unnecessary. He was there just so that he'd be like, oh yeah, Eclipso. Well, now he's got his own event. Well, and remind you like, hey, I've seen Starman and Eclipso together don't before. Forget, Star that Man. makes sense. Starman getting him working. And also, Lobo, you're welcome. Is this Starman? No. Who the hell is this? That is Largand, and Largand who also may be confused with Mon-El, will be known later at the end of this event as Valor. So let's call him Valor for now. Okay. He's a Daxamite who has similar powers to Superman, uh, though okay. he also has a weakness to lead, but it doesn't come up. So <laughs> he happens upon Eclipso's Cathedral, goes in there, and there's a great description, though we don't actually see it really depicted, it's, a, it's unfortunate in this <laughs> visual medium, uh, that Eclipso morphs out of the throne that he has for himself. Like he is the throne oh. and then he comes out of it. And there is a moment where he's like separating from it. Like there's like tendons and things yeah. snapping as he comes out of the throne. Yeah. And Eclipso instigates Largand into getting angry so that in his cathedral is like holy place of evil. <laughs> uh, he can then influence Largand and take over. Okay. Oh. Which he does. Yeah, like he's more powerful in his home base. Yes. All right. Exactly. Right. On the dark side of the moon. Damn right. Metal. So he <laughs> now possesses Largand and he's like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that I, Eclipso, a villain since 1963, have never thought to possess superheroes before? <laughs> Why don't I just do this all the time? Why don't I do this all the Why time? Why I ever take over a normal person when I could do that to a super person? Exactly, and that's what e Eclipse of the Darkness Within is. He's like, oh! He just randomly gets that idea in the first few pages of this book. Yes, because Largan stumbles onto his base. Oh my god. So, so he's like, Largan's well, what the hell was yes. he doing with all those shat like pieces of the diamond before? Well, because oh, he was well. he was spreading his influence so that he could infect the hearts of men. Is there a thing where like, because he made so many pieces and it's harder to control them, superheroes have like stronger will and can resist him easier? No, only Superman can do that, kind of. Because Superman is of course like the most pure and strongest among us. Right. But uh, no, that doesn't come up. Even though Hal Jordan could totally do it. He does not. At all. 
He's got the strongest will of anyone we know. That should be a thing. <laughs> that should absolutely be a thing. Yep. And it isn't. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he falls under uh, Eclipso's thrall. So that, that's, that's Eclipso's plan. He's like, okay. I'm going to be the main bad guy in a DC Comics event. <laughs> Move out of the way, monarch. It's Eclipso's turn. Whoever you turned out to be? <sighs> Captain Adam? Nope. Hawk? That sucks. That's so Eclipso's that's his plan. entire plan. Yes. It's just like, be, but what's his end game when he gets all these superheroes? Oh, well, then I will rule. Them? Oh. Okay. <laughs> he just wants to be in charge. Yeah. Like they all do. You know. Yeah, let me I, tell I you, guess. you don't. You don't want those headaches. No. Well, he's not going to like run the economy or anything. He, he doesn't <laughs> no, care about just, like he's international be like trade. He's in charge of the world. No, yeah. he doesn't want it's a like desk having, job. It's like having his own realm. Kind yes. of like God ruled and kicked him out. He's like, well, I'll have my own realm. That is, I'll take Earth from God. It, it, that is editorializing, but uh, we'll give it to him because he has no other motivations. Because, I mean, you know, he beats people. Right. Whatever. So then, uh, of course, Bruce Gordon is a problem because Eclipso hates him because mm -hmm. he was his vessel and he's this like goody two shoes. And we're gonna retcon that Eclipso was Bruce Gordon's darker half and he picked Bruce Gordon specifically because Bruce Gordon is the foremost solar scientist and he would have ushered man into a new golden age of solar technology that would have allowed us to have like free energy and everything if we had only derived it from the sun. The reason why solar cells only like absorb like 12% or 2% of rays mm -hmm. is because Bruce Gordon was so distracted dealing with Eclipso and his dumbass adventures. If he had not been distracted, he would have been able to make better solar <laughs> technology and we would actually be in a golden age of technological wait, utopia. Wait, wait, where are you getting that from? This. That says that? Yeah. Because this one guy. Yes. He's that good. So all of tech, like solar technology hinges on this one guy. Yes. Yeah. That's and insane. No one else would be able to follow in his footsteps. No. Although there are solar scientists and they're all really important to the plot of the story. <laughs> but uh, they're all, they all pale in comparison. To Bruce Gordon. To Bruce Gordon. They're, they might as well not even exist because they can't build a better solar panel. Clearly. Yeah, okay. Do, what if they have him <laughs> sabotaging other people? Like does that oh. come up? And that's why it's like, well, there's someone on the inside in the community who's yeah. like screwing up the research. Honestly, one could probably derive some kind of meaning from that. I, I feel like it's not overtly said, but when he says that he sabotaged Bruce Gordon's life and his research, that maybe that also extends to Bruce Gordon's influence over oh. his colleagues. Let's assume that, right. but it's not in the text. All I they, can tell you is Bruce Gordon is really great at what he does, and what he does is solar technology. Maybe he infects the solar technology with his Eclipso powers, no. causing it to be less efficient. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, he distracts him from being better at his job. That's that. that <laughs> hey, is, look, hula girls. <laughs> what? Hey, look, an adventure fighting Eclipso. Shit, I was just making a breakthrough. That's, oh, well. That's it. Where are my notes? <laughs> oh, crap. I threw them in the garbage while I was Eclipso? Probably. So so that explains why we don't have more solar technology. It's yeah. not that the fossil fuel industry like suppressed oh, it. Oh, no. It's, <laughs> no, it's, it's that Eclipso is scared of solar technology yes. and was influencing this one guy to not develop And wouldn't problem. it be fun if they also established that like Eclipso maybe used his black diamonds to infect the hearts and minds of certain uh, oh oil barons or captains of industry so that they would be yes. more money grubby or desire the destruction of the uh, world environment. Right. But that's not, but that's, not that, that's again, editorializing. Yeah. So Bruce Gordon is at home, not saving the world with his brilliant brain, but instead is looking at one of these Eclipso diamonds under a microscope. And what he sees, because he thinks that Eclipso's dead and destroyed thanks to the Starman book, oh, that's the connection. So anyway, uh, he's looking at it and he notices after a little while that it's like freaking out under the microscope. And it's just it's just going in a certain direction. It's like dink, dink, dink. And he's like, what the, what the crap is this? <laughs> so he moves it back and it goes back. And he's like, wait a minute, something is drawing this diamond away from me. Yeah, like a magnet. Yes, what could it be? He puts the diamond into like a thing, like a little box, like a, ro like a, like a machine, which he will then use later. Uh, and this machine contains the diamond and also prevents him from being eclipsoed. So Bruce Gordon uses this like device that now has the black diamond or his black diamond inside of it as a divining rod through the city of Manhattan and finds his way into an apartment and discovers a man brutally murdered by his wife who was given a black diamond. Because we know there's a thousand or at least 999 of them rolling around somewhere. Right. So incidentally, this dude was like a pawn shop owner 
and he f was given the Having black diamond. diamond. And then was like, I'll yeah. give it to my wife. And then she wore it, became an Eclipso, and murdered him. Oh. That's what Eclipso does? Now he does, because he's, he's a freaking psycho. Oh. He got a little taste of power thanks to Largan. Now he's like, oh man, I'm gonna freak out, start murdering random people. Well, he was the wrath of God or whatever, so like that kind of makes sense that yeah. he would just like kill people. But I would love it if like, maybe he was like, I'm gonna, like the whole thing is actually subterfuge to get God's attention and get oh. his job back. But no, nor does the Spectre That's factor in. The Spectre shows up in Eclipso Solo series that launches after the series. The Spectre doesn't have time for this bullshit. He does not, but the Phantom Stranger does. Or rather he doesn't, he sends a holographic projection of himself to Eclipso on his base on the moon and goes, you're up to something, but I don't have time to get involved, fuck you, and then leaves. <laughs> actually, Eclipso blows him up, but it's only a projection anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so. Bruce Gordon is like, all right, there's something going on with these diamonds. He collects that diamond, puts it into the box, and then proceeds to go on an adventure collecting these Eclipso diamonds throughout the DC universe. So it's kind of uh, like I collect one and then it le needs, leads me to the next one. Yes. It's like the closest proximity, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It leads me to the nearest one. And then, you know, if I've gotten everything in the continental United States, it'll still, like, lead me, but it'll it's like take a video me longer. Game. Yes. We have to also wholly ignore the vastly inappropriate stereotypes in this jewelry store where they have the black diamond appraised and we see three really inappropriate stereotypes Ugh. who are really interested in getting this black diamond. They tell you the history of the diamond and that's all we need to know. They, they explain that it, the, the whole myth about like the big diamond, the heart of darkness, how it was shattered by a guy, they know it all. It's true. It's true, all, all of it. it. Thanks a lot, Han. A the black diamonds are affecting so many different people throughout the DC universe, but of course, it's all part of Eclipso's plan. Originally, he was just going like person to person and doing adventure to adventure, or you know, evil scheme to evil scheme, but now he's like, I got Largand, I want to screw over Bruce Gordon because he was my vessel and I hated him and he fought against me even though I was him. And I want to collect more superheroes. So he starts doing some shit to attract the attention of all the superheroes throughout the DC universe that are participating in this event. I see. Uh, so he possesses a survivalist, which is to say um, an extra from Predator <laughs> who is just opening fire on people in an office building. I thought it was gonna be Sergeant Slaughter. I know. Uh, they call him a survivalist. Uh, he fights the Creeper, because <laughs> why not? Let's have it be the Creeper. Sure. So, uh, the Creeper attacks. It's like an elf, right? Right, yeah, why not? Elf yeah. versus elf. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, so the Creeper attacks the survivalist. The survivalist makes sure that the Creeper gets the Black Diamond in his possession. And so, now uh, Eclipso has the Creeper in his thrall. Oh no. Not the creeper. Not the creeper. <laughs> what to do with that creeper? So Bruce is like, all right, well, I've whipped up this little machine, the ones that I've been, the, the, the divining rod. It also fires solar energy. So I'm gonna use that to find and defeat Eclipso and I'm leaving. Does the solar no. energy like hurt the diamonds or no. something? No, no, they don't. But it runs no. on the diamonds. Oh, it runs on the diamonds. What? Yeah, you know, like uh, Mr. Freeze's suit in Batman and Robin. So, okay, so now they're gonna fight for the diamond. Like, Oh, yes. well, I need the diamonds for these things. Oh, well, I need the diamonds to control people yeah. or whatever. Yeah, but they don't like bump into each other. Nor is oh. like, oh no, he's got too many diamonds. <laughs> like that doesn't come up. There's no diamond counter that shows who has how many oh, diamonds. I wish. Which team has more if of the only. diamonds. only! I think there would have been. <laughs> yeah. If there was any court, if they, if they were like, oh, you making the uh, Justice League, no, not Justice League of America, the Justice League Europe book. Uh, you are gonna <laughs> be number 13. And number 13, no. Also there's a thousand diamonds. <laughs> well, yeah. The numbers would get a bit absurd. Oh, and at the end, they just go, oh, oh he's got them all. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he collected them all. Oh, really? Because I didn't see a thousand Eclipsos, although we do see quite a few of them later. Because it's like a whole town. How does he get a thousand? That, wouldn't that take weeks to years? Oh, it takes weeks throughout this book. Oh, oh okay. It, it seems like it's a couple days, and at the end, they're like, what have we been doing for weeks? And I'm like, weeks? <laughs> These people are dying, man. <laughs> So yeah, that's why also, we have to make sure we get them all. It takes time. It takes time. If I've, he collects a, a thousand objects in weeks, some of them must, there must be like caches of like hundreds of them. <laughs> no, the, the most I think we see, like someone has two of them. Like, oh my God. That's the maximum so amount. So he goes to almost a thousand. It's not people. like we go through like 15, like 15 tie-ins. Right. And then in the end, like Penguin has 400 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been collecting them through the underground. Right, that week. would be actually, again, better idea. And it's like, that's why I, every once in a while I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if like you had another go yeah. at these? 
Yeah. Like, if you're not going to make an omnibus of them, which clearly they're not because we've done two episodes already on these events, and I've said in every single episode, do an omnibus of Armageddon 2001 and Bloodlines and Eclipse of the Darkness Within. You'll trick everyone into buying it at least once, yeah. and that's all you need. You don't need to print it again. Just make the one. Uh, yeah, definitely. Right? Just, just, just this a, from a is ridiculous. It yeah. is ridiculous. And it's unruly and it's inappropriate. Yeah. Don't forget those. You don't even have those in there. Right. Like, Yes. That's prequel stuff. We don't need that. that. We don't even need the Starman stuff. All you need to know is that Starman will be a linchpin in Eclipso schemes. We're spending a lot of time on the first issue. I promise you we won't on every other issue. Uh, yeah, right. that, the first go, issue go sets through. it all up. Exactly. But feel free to le leaf through them. That kid throws up purple blackness. Yeah, because this kid who Bruce Gordon and company, because he's like, oh, I'm going to go by myself. Mona's like, oh, no, you're not. And he's like, okay. So then they go and they, they are led to a mall because somebody saw Terminator 2. Uh, and yeah. one of these little John Connor ripoffs is at the mall playing video games, and he has an Eclipso diamond. Never mind how he gets it; he found he found it somewhere. Right? These but, are just around. Yes, right. there's a thousand. That's the nature of evil. <laughs> yes, it's dispersed or that's, whatever. That's true. And it, it, who knows why it crops up where it crops up? Yeah, we know that Eclipso is the antagonist. He is going to try and rule, uh, mm -hmm. and he needs these diamonds. And the diamonds he wants to get into the possession of superheroes. The power, right. the more powerful, the better. If one is in possession of an Eclipso diamond, well, there's two different ways it can go. They have to be angry, right? So that Eclipso can eclipse their heart, right? Uh, but also, once they are in possession of it, they can go one of two ways. Either they vomit up a monster that is a totem of what they're angry about, <laughs> or they are completely possessed by Eclipso and Eclipso puppets them like he's them. The monster remains within them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Except Bruce. Scenario. Bruce doesn't get you no. know, control. That's right. That's right. Uh, so this boy, he is so upset because like a a full grown adult cuts in front of him at the arcade. Oh. And I'm like, that is pretty shitty. Yeah. Like this kid is clearly like nine, and this dude's got to be what like 37, <laughs> and the kid's like, ooh, I'm so mad. Blah, blah, blah. And so a monster emerges, and the monster, according to the folk who are like observing it. Uh, inspired by video games. Oh no, they'll rack your brain because everyone who's writing these is 45. And right, uh, the game he was playing was called Monster Boy. It was. Actually, it was Rage Boy. Rage, oh, Rage Boy. Boy, I'm sorry. Which is what... It that monster from the game. That's right, that's yeah. right. So we see that this monster is going to kill that guy and this attracts the attention of Clark Kent, Ace Reporter, Superman. Oh. Uh, so he shows up, he fights the monster. He uh, is thrashed around by the monster. Bruce Gordon busts out that awesome light ray that he's gonna use, not to be confused, of course, with the new Genesis CN superhero. Uh, right. But uh, he fires the like beam at the monster, which dissipates the monster, but doesn't resolve our problem because the boy took the diamond, he's gone. So we gotta go look for that boy. Uh, so. So we don't even have one diamond. We do. We we have the two diamonds that are in the machine that he's using to shoot bad ah, guys. Okay. But we also need again 998 of them now. Right. So yeah, but shouldn't that machine lead them to the boy? Oh, he oh, ran away. Yeah. Deep. Oh, he's that way. Oh, it does. But that kid's really fast. So we then establish that Bruce and Mona have teamed up with Superman, and he's like, "What's up?" And that sets up the whole thing. That sets up the whole damn thing. Sweet. Sweet. Kiss revenge. Yeah. Moving on. There's there's a couple of bands who have uh, ads Another on one. these. Yeah, I saw the back of this one. Oh my god, are these all? Oh no, here we go. No, the no, first no. four issues, though, have the Kiss. Yes, Revenge. L.A. Guns. I've never heard of them, I but I've seen this ad a thousand times in my life. Yep. That was what Rockwell was meant to be. They're Hollywood vampires. We're gonna have to listen to that album when we, before this episode's out. <laughs> Someone remember. Okay, what follows so is uh, Bruce Gordon and company, sometimes Superman, sometimes not, uh, going around looking for diamonds. Uh, of course, some Somebody. characters bump into other characters. Uh, some characters are clued into the other characters, like but plight. Ethan, how will we know what order we're in? Now, what's frustrating is there is kind of an order. Oh, so they do build on each other a little bit. It's yes, not just hilariously like though. Yeah, well, but what's frustrating is at the end of every issue, they will tell you, like, this will be continued in another story, like, is the next one you have to read. For that, you have to go on the internet and find a reading order, which I did, and I uh, found that uh, following the reading order versus the suggested reading order from the actual texts was more accurate. Huh. So they screwed up. Yeah. And or they just... Which is not surprising, because, like, these were all being written, like, freaking simultaneously. At the exact same probably. time, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. all right. So I'm guessing in each book, it's like mostly 
like a standalone, but there is a little bit of continuity from one to the next. 100%. Related to the overall storyline. Yep. The Superman ones are much more connected, as you can imagine. The Batman ones are as well. Yeah. Uh, but who gives a crap? I am really not a fan of Eclipso sitting on his throne being like, come fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for this? I mean, Ooh, let's like split it Listen, out. you know what? That's, a, that's an intimidating pose. He and he, he, Yeah, he is in a seat of power. Yep. Look at how much raw power, spoilers by the way, he is in possession of. He's won, essentially. Right, that's the I won pose. He, it's over. he is so high on himself, he's wearing his stupid outdated costume. <laughs> I'm getting back into an original Eclipso here. That's right. I'm going to make it work. Goodbye, horses. <laughs> I wish we had more time to get into every single issue because right. they all have their own stories and <sighs> such that they are. Like, okay, really quick. Uh, a Batman one. Joker stole $25 million at some point in the past and the underworld finds out about it now. Got it. And so they're like, we got to get some of that. And when I say they, I mean the ventriloquist and his stupid dummy. Yes. And so the ventriloquist is like, we're going to get, we're going to steal the money that the Joker procured. We're going to break him out of Arkham and we're going to ask him where the money is and he will totally tell us where it is because otherwise we'll kill him. Oh yeah. And I'm like, you're going to kill the Joker. Holy crap. It's also the anniversary of the killing joke, which like, damn you. Uh, and <laughs> oh, no. Gordon is really upset, not to be confused with Bruce Gordon, right. who by the way is named after Bruce Wayne and uh, Jim Gordon. Like the creators of Bruce Gordon oh. and Eclipso were like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if his name was Bruce Gordon? You know, like Bruce, and I'm like, to what end? He has nothing to do with either of those characters. And they're like, I don't know. And like, that's the lore behind that character. It's just, oh, we God. thought it'd be funny. And I'm like, that's, the, that's not funny. The humor implies a joke. <laughs> Right. Set up a punchline. This is nothing. If there was a connection between those characters, of any make kind, some kind of sense. No, it's just weird to see Superman keep referring to a Bruce and it not being Batman. <laughs> but uh, so Gordon is upset at Joker, and then he finds out the Joker gets uh, freed. Of course, he gets in possession of an Eclipso diamond, so he is angry at the fact that Joker is alive and unpunished, seemingly, okay. for his daughter's uh, you know, par paralysis. So then he conjures a monster and the monster goes on a rampage, clearly kills a few people, but then when they tell Gordon, like, six people were injured but not dead, and he's like, and he's still upset like he killed them, so clearly th they changed it in the, in the dialogue. Yeah. That, like, they told him that they died because they clearly do, right. uh, but then they were like, that's kind of harsh. Let's I'm not make Jim Gordon for responsible for the death of- Six injuries. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, and they're policemen too. So it's like, oh, it's they're, they're your fault. Right. But how are you gonna write that down in your police report? <laughs> I was in possession of an Eclipso diamond, and uh, I yeah. conjured a demon from my anger, oh my my, my misplaced rage at the Joker, and. Uh, oh my God. He, the he, only reason he's not gonna put that in the police report is because like then I have to go talk to the therapist again. I'd have to go yeah get counseling, and I'm not gonna do that again. I mean, these police officers are, are definitely dead. <laughs> Like this guy's whole torso gets ripped through. <laughs> I know. No, Ethan, he's just resting. <laughs> like, look at that. Like, you know, oh, he's his, dead. His insides are on the outside. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, they defeat the monster, uh, and you know, the Joker gets away. <laughs> As he is wont to do. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, then it's, they defeat the monster. How? Oh, with light. Okay. It's you know, just with, always with light. Batman uses like a, a light sword, like a lightsaber toy. Oh god, yes, they're in a toy uh, warehouse and there's these solar swords that are for children but they really but are they, powered really by, are the powered the sun. by the sun. And so Why? he wields it like it's a blade and fights the monster and then uh, you know. The, what happens Could you take a plant and throw it at it? Since loses it's powered by the sun. What? I said, can you take a plant and throw it at it since it's powered by Again, the sun? Yeah, no, because oh, yeah. Superman would be the same thing, because he is a plant, basically. Uh, but no, man. I, yeah. It has to be a light bulb it has powered to be light by the sun. That is fired at you. Yeah. The most interesting part of this book is the cover. Yes, drawn which, by Sam Keith. Ah, uh, okay, because I was like, it looks like the Max. And it does for that's, a very distinct reason, and it's because awesome. it's drawn by the guy who created the Max. That's a great cover. Look it, at that freaking cover. Uh, it's insane. He also draws all the Batman covers, by the way, and they're uh, all pretty cool. Even the Robin one, which... Okay. The Robin one is just, Robin. there's another character that I wanted to introduce later on in his own story, but there's a villain or an anti-hero called Anarchy, and Anarchy is like, I wanna 
you know, obviously bring about anarchy and, you know, Gotham is kind of a police state anyway, so he gets possession of an Eclipso diamond and so he tries to force Gotham into, you know, d dissolving the police department and giving the power back to the people and stuff and then... Uh, That's a bad idea, man. I know. Uh, and he, and by, by proving his point, he destroys a bridge. Like the like the equivalent of the Brooklyn Bridge in oh, Gotham. That's oh. anarchy in the giant red yeah. suit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, what, he is, why is distinct it? and crazy looking. He is crazy looking. What yeah. is he like a monster? What is nope. He? He's a child in oh. an outfit, pretending to be an adult. He looks like a V for Vendetta that's character. Hilarious. He is a V for Vendetta character. <laughs> is he, he is an incontinuity send up of V. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so Robin fights him because they're both children. Is he a critique of V? I think in order for like it to be a critique guy? of V, there would have to be some kind of like, you know, thought or some kind of idea behind it. <laughs> it is created, them. I believe he's created by Alan Grant, who is British and also came from the same school of, you know, uh, Hard Knocks as Alan Moore and company. So Interesting. He, you know, he came in through the British invasion of comics. So I assume that he is a critique. Well, I can imagine somebody with different politics from Alan Moore saying like, no, V is no, a bad v sucks. guy. And well, and I think that Alan Moore also saying Well, that. yeah, he would say that as well, but he didn't make him like a- A Batman villain. Like a Batman <laughs> villain. <laughs> Batman and Robin, more or less Robin, defeats anarchy because anarchy is an asshole and like blows up infrastructure. But not uh, parliament. No. No. Well, because there's no parliament in Gotham. But you know, he gets the best, next best thing, which is, of course, a bridge. A bridge. A bridge. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but a very a very big bridge. Hey, what's that part in a song called that connects two phrases? A bridge! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he hates that bridge. I hate it. I hate it. He's Why true. does he hate it? He needs to... He knows that the Eclipso Diamond is activated by hate, and he knows uh... that he will get the power to destroy that bridge but... unless he has the hate. But he's just saying it. Yeah, that's not actual hate. I know, but he's 14. That's all it takes. He needs How to listen to us like a My Chemical a Romance song. He's ready to go. That's hilarious. I know. So also, that... making him a child is also a critique. Oh, yes. More. Well, because, of course, it's like, well, only a child could believe such, like, yeah. black and white, simplistic exactly. know, platitudes. Yeah, uh, or believe that, you know, destruction of, you know, public property is any is way any the, positive, you know, net value. Gain for, you know, people. Yeah. Yeah, never mind that people that you're trying to protect and empower use that bridge every single day. Right. Or, or are on it currently. Uh, Do they have a hilarious unmasking scene where they show... He's already been unmasked. Like, there was a uh, whole okay. story arc in Batman uh, where they reveal... Where it's like, anarchy, the next big villain! And then, like, the big reveal is that he's a child. And, um, and I assume he's, like, holding, like, a pole. Yes. That's why the neck That's is... That's why like he looks long. so insane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that whole thing wraps up at, like, a park where uh, a girl is jilted by her boyfriend because... Her boyfriend is cheating on her with some other girl. Oh. And so the girl gets the black diamond and she makes a Tyrannosaurus Rex that attacks them. <laughs> These are the stories. Uh, that all That's wraps up in amazing. the Batman one where uh, ultimately we finally pay off the $25 million plot where Joker is like, I can't spend my $25 million because if I show my face, I'll be arrested. I mean, I don't see how that's any different from any other day, but in this case, it's pretty bad. But he makes a throne out of money, and uh, Batman and he come to blows. Joker, of course, finds out about Eclipse of the Darkness Within, and he's like, I want to I wanna be involved. Like, I want to be in this story. I, I need to get me one of them diamonds. What will happen if the Joker gets a diamond? Right. So he does, and he becomes a big, horrible Joker monster. And so Batman's like, in order to fight the Joker, I have to become an Eclipso. So he gets one of the diamonds that he recovers, and he becomes a giant Eclipso well, monster. everyone's getting diamonds. And so also Batman. It's the end of Ark of Asylum. Exactly like it! <laughs> and so Batman and Joker fight, and it's actually one of the better moments in this whole saga because Batman and Joker are fighting. They're both Eclipso. Whatever they were angry at when they were wielding the diamond that makes them into the like compulsive monster that needs to destroy the thing they were angry about, they have to actually get it out of their system before Eclipso can then take hold. So if they right. keep it going, right. then Eclipso isn't going to be in them. Okay. So it, if they just kept like raging yes. and freaking out, well, and especially if they're, if they're if they're edged to the thing they want to destroy, then Eclipso can't take hold of them. So in this case, Batman and Joker have to fight, and they hate each other, and so they are fighting. And Eclipso realizes, upon being puppeted by them, that. Batman and Joker are never going to stop and they're too evenly matched and this this fight will go on forever. And so he abandons both of them. And so both of them like, are oh, like- never mind. Yes, <laughs> and so Batman's like, okay. And then he punches Joker, takes his diamond, puts it in his belt and leaves. And I'm like, that's kind of fun. Okay. 
So that's the yeah. Batman story. You know, the Batman story is that. You know, the Justice League story is the Justice League suck ass. <laughs> and okay, really quick uh, editorializing uh, for this show. Uh huh. One of the main points of criticism that we lob at these kinds of events, particularly DC during the early 90s, uh -huh. is that for whatever reason, DC is like, okay, yeah, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, they sell books, but the Justice League is going to be Booster Gold and Blue Beetle and Bloodwind and Maxima and Guy Gardner and so forth. Right, because you put them all together and that's like one Wonder Woman. Yeah, and like, <laughs> it's weird because you'd think, well, why are these sales in the toilet? Maybe you should elevate the characters that sell. Right. But I really appreciate that DC did any effort to propagate characters that normally would not have a platform because yeah. that is how you get Booster Gold fans. Right. Like you, you don't have Blue Beetle fans unless Blue Beetle is an integral member of the Justice League. Right. And it, even though it never, ever led to sales. Right, it didn't It work. did not pay off, it right. did not work. Yeah, from a financial standpoint. No, but from failed. a creative and fan perspective, it worked in as much as it made these characters persist. You're right. You actually still right. have Blue Beetle fans today to the point where there is a Blue Beetle movie. Right, like Blue Beetle oh retained God. relevance. Yes. Instead of falling into just complete Atrophy. Yeah. Like if you had just gone, well, we are the company that publishes Batman, Superman, and maybe Wonder Woman. Those are the characters that will be highlighted. Like there's a story right. in this where Superman meets up with Wonder Woman, and of course she's new here. So he's like, Wonder Woman, I need you to help me with this. Come with me to the Justice League because the Justice League sucks, man. <laughs> and she's like, no. <laughs> with those losers? She doesn't even say that. She's just like, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And you're like, oh my God, for the love of God, please, can you have one DC Comics event with the Trinity? <laughs> like, can I, can I please see Wonder Woman, Superman, and, and, oh, and Batman? That doesn't exist anymore. I no. mean, no. We have an editorial mandate to never have a book with all three of them. Right, like even War of the Gods, you kind <laughs> of almost see it because there's a, there's a Batman tie-in. But like, there's no Superman, you just don't get it. And you're just like, I want to see that. But at the same time, you will see Fire and Ice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope you like them. It goes off the rails, and Wonder Woman is uh, in her own tie-in, which doesn't really factor into the Just League story, but she ultimately sees the power of Eclipso, and she's like, okay. So she goes back, and she's like, all right, I'm gonna help you. <laughs> then oh, she's, thanks. Then she's immediately taken over by an Eclipso diamond, and so she's not gonna help them at all. She's not involved. Mm. But the Justice League, they get involved, and they suck. And Superman is like, you guys need to get your shit together because you're the Justice League. Right. Like, I am having a hard time already. And in one of his stories, Superman uh, gets possession of an Eclipso diamond and Eclipso's like, yes, finally, mm -hmm. got him. And Superman is like, no. Right, And because he doesn't have the anger. And no, the, and Eclipso's yeah. like, what the fuck? And <laughs> Superman goes, I honestly wanted to see if I was as pure as heart, of heart as everybody thought I was. So I'm glad it worked out. And, and guess like, what I am. And if I were Bruce Gordon, to be like, are you shitting me? <laughs> does he like crush oh, no. the diamond into powder? He does powder? it, he squeezes it really hard, but it doesn't break. No. I know, I want him to break them. I, I, there's no fewer than two or three panels in which he squeezes the diamond really hard because it's so rad. Right. And it doesn't like I mean, corrupt to dust. I just, you can't defeat evil by punching it or crushing it, you know? They, they try. No, you can <laughs> defeat evil by shining the sun on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, by shining a light on it. I mean, they do though. <laughs> uh, but then they don't because like immediately following this eclipse, I was like, yeah, and I'm like, <gasps> Yeah, well, I never die. I am. I am immortal. I am, immortal. I am, I am eternal. Forever. I'm right. just looking at the. Uh, her accepting Superman's offer after rejecting it yes. to help out the Justice League, and she shows up at Maximum's like, what the fuck? Yes, because we're out of here. Well, because Maximum's like, oh no. Maximum's only here to fuck Superman. Yeah. And uh, Wonder Woman is absolutely in my league. Like, I can't compete. Right. And I won't, so get out. <laughs> and Wonder Woman is great because she's like Wonder Woman, right? So Max was like, get out of here! And Wonder Woman's like, Ex -ex 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 excuse me. And just <laughs> <laughs> this expression on her face. <laughs> Max just was this like casual out. dismissal, just like, like, ugh. Like, I haven't had to deal with a woman like you <sighs> in a long time. Cal, just. Oh, and in between Eclipse okay. of the Darkness Within, we also have an episode of Back Issues because Guy Gardner had been ejected from the Lantern Corps, but also like wouldn't move out of the Justice League headquarters because like, where am I gonna stay? 
But in between that, he's in a story arc called Guy Garden Reborn, in which he procures the Sinestro ring. At the end of this, he shows up and he's like, you guys, I've got the Sinestro ring. I'm gonna lantern again. Let's do this, woohoo. And then they're all like, you suck. And he's like, and you're evil, it's a yellow <laughs> ring. No, they don't even care about that. They don't even think, they don't even address the ring. They're like, what? They're just like, boo, we thought we were rid of you. And he's like, what? I thought you were mad at me because I was like, I, I was better than you, <laughs> I was stronger than you, or you were like resentful. No, we like, just no, hate your you. Personality thought everyone liked my your personality haircut. sucks. <laughs> I thought you were jealous of my bowl cut. And they were like, no. No, nobody's you're, jealous of anything about you. <laughs> you were repugnant. Worst. And he's like, oh. What about my sweet bomber vest? Yeah. Nope, lame. We hate it. Like everything about you. <laughs> Again, the comments are ablaze. <laughs> yeah, so the oh, Justice man, League- you guys, you guys are always ragging on me. Oh. You must really like me. <laughs> oh man, you know, you guys really let me have it today. I gotta tell you, I thought when I was a Green Lantern, you know, that was because I was redundant, but now that I'm my own character and I don't have a superhero name, my name is literally just my name. <laughs> uh, but, but, but it turns out you just, you, you, you never liked me in the first place. Oh jeez. Oh, it looks like at the end of this book, uh, oh, Justice my God. League Maxima gets uh, taken over. Yeah, of course she does. Uh, <laughs> the Justice League fights Maxima, like, most of the book, and while that's happening, in the Justice League headquarters, Eclipso shows up and he's like, hey, Blue Beetle, I'm gonna get you." <laughs> it's like, I guess he just can't shed his Eclipso roots of being like this <laughs> dumb imp where he's like, I have a hat with a little whoop on the back. That means I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> and so Blue Beetle is just like, oh shit. And so he's just like running through the thing. And he's, like, he's like hobbling together like devices and thrown at him and like closing doors, just running for his life. And I'm like, all, all I'm getting is shades of Infinite Crisis when he's like assassinated. <laughs> There's like, oh my god, we can never give Ted a break. This poor <laughs> son of a bitch. But yeah, the, he but he does hold his own. It's pretty cool. And he get, he like makes it all the way to the bug, and then Eclipse is like, no, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> and then uh, and then at the end, uh, he he barely manages to uh, basically purge Eclipso from the area. And then uh, he just like he, someone goes, hey, and he turns around and he's blasted by something and disappears. Oh. And that I was like, oh, you got me, book. Before I was just bored to tears, but now I'm kind of like, what's going on with that blast? And then you'll see that throughout the whole story, they will clumsily introduce scientists with names. Like uh, Emil Hamilton would be working with Lex Luthor II, you know, the Australian clone of Lex Luthor. Right. Mm -hmm. And they are working on like methods to defeat Eclipso through the like guidance of Superman. And uh, Emil dis disappears in a, in a blast of light. You know, like random scientists will just be like, I'm doing something or it's the end of the book and I forgot. And so here he is and then flash. Oh no. Oh, and also uh, <laughs> Lois goes to a town called like Craterville or something. <laughs> okay. And oh, okay. that's in the one of the Superman ones. Uh, Lois is investigating a town which, <laughs> There's like an evil company that's like basically overrun the town, and they're they're accused of illegal dumping, and so she's gonna write an expose on them. Uh, but actually, that town was completely, and it's not unlike what I just pitched earlier about how like the the diamonds are used by Eclipso to like control captains of industry. Mm -hmm. Right. But rather than setting his sights on like global conquest, Eclipso made sure that a bunch of his diamonds were like just, just dispersed throughout this small southern town. And so a bunch of its citizens are in possession of the Eclipso diamond. And so like there's a bunch of Eclipsos in there. Oh. And uh, Eclipso himself influenced the town to be kind of evil. And so like, yeah, there's to evil. To do evil, evil deeds. Yeah, just to be like town. a center of evil for some reason. And you'd think like, oh, maybe it's like the, the evil beating heart of America. And like mm. it's infecting, like people will leave and they'll marry people and they'll have evil children and, or they'll get jobs in other corporations and rise the corporate ladder. No, again, he doesn't have his like delusions of grandeur until he defeats uh, Valor mm. at the beginning of the book. Uh, so, you know, he's just like, at some point he goes, good thing I took over that town off screen. <laughs> and you're like, okay. So Lois is there, and she's like, oh, I gotta deal with this thing. And then uh, 
they're like, oh, let's give her a diamond and get her mad. And so the guy who's working for Eclipse, so that's right, there's like a Renfield, but he doesn't come up ever again after this, <laughs> who's like, yes, Eclipse, I'm going to help you. Uh, because he's also like a businessman. Like, I think he's like a, yeah, he, he works with the company. That's right, like, he's a lackey. He's a lackey. But right. he's, he's, he works with the company that's doing the dumping. He's getting paid. And so he's like, oh, I'll get Lois. Lois gets the diamond. They leave it with her in like her hotel room. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, let's make her mad. So he keeps like spilling coffee on her and stuff. And it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just pathetic. And, and then- uh, What does know, her monster turn into? She doesn't, you know, she becomes a monster. Like she becomes an Eclipso monster. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but he ultimately defeats her. And uh, Bruce Gordon is there too. The machine breaks. They're like, oh no, I dropped it. And you're like, already? Uh, but uh, you know they fix it or they whatever. But uh, but then like but Bruce Gordon and Superman are like part of this thing. They, they, the they, the they, little machine that was telling them where to go. Yeah, it was just in a petri dish at one point, tinking into the glass. Just do that again. Right. Well, no, but no, it won't shoot the energy. That's the problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, like the the lens mm. broke. Yeah, that's the broken part. Uh, can we just say how bizarre it is that the energy that you get from the Black Diamond is the is, same energy that is sunlight powered to yes, defeat Eclipso? I agree. No, it's like, what? But that's how good a scientist he is. <laughs> and maybe the working knowledge of him being Eclipso figured out like, oh, no, there's some like hidden, but again, yeah, no, maybe Eclipso is infected with like an evil solar uh, impurity, you know, not unlike Parallax. Oh. That, and and uh, the sun is actually angelic, and so like, there's actually like a like maybe Zariel, who will be invented by Grant Morrison later on, was actually within Eclipso the whole time. <laughs> now you're thinking like a DC Comics editor. Uh, but, uh, so, but but Bruce Gordon like helps Superman to the point where like the two like the, the team and Superman will like get in a plane and go places. And <laughs> Superman will like fly alongside them and stuff, and then out of nowhere, Bruce Gordon will not be in the book anymore. Oh. Like he is the protagonist, he, he's directing the book. And then he just goes away and Superman's like, uh oh. And that's when he calls the Justice League. He's like, hey guys, uh, what are we gonna do about this? <laughs> I lost Bruce. <laughs> I lost this guy. They're like, who? Like they, they don't know, they don't care. They didn't read Eclipso books. Right. So, you know, we didn't read Starman. Oh, Starman. Right. So Eclipso Starman takes over in, Starman. Within this one. Yeah. Eclipso takes over Starman because after, uh, he's had a, he has a book, but he doesn't have an annual. So we're not going to put that in there. Uh, Starman will be like a, a bit player in everyone else's books. Eclipso takes over Starman because he always wanted to and he always meant to. And that's why he's responsible for Starman's origins in the first place. And he's finally getting around to it. Yes. And like he created him just so we could take him over? Yes. Even though clearly they didn't do that. Like that was not the plan, but it is in this. And so he takes over Starman and he's like, this is great because Starman can like change his form and alter his vocal cords. Okay. So Eclipso, because you'll, you might notice that anyone who's taken over by Eclipso has like the, by the way, his face looks like an eclipse. Yeah. It took me forever. I was like, what? Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, they get that, but they also- I wouldn't have known until, well, you described him to us a long time That's, ago. We did, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Those, uh, popped up occasionally throughout these, uh, these episodes. Yeah. But um, he also has a special speech balloon. And anyone who's taken over by Eclipso has the Eclipso balloon. So you know that it's Eclipso uh, because he's like altered. Right. You know, like Lois will talk, but Eclipso's voice will come out. But as Starman, he can change the vocal cords, even though they are Starman's vocal cords to sound like Starman not possessed by Eclipso, and to alter his face, which is truly Starman's face, to not look like an Eclipso face. But no, it, it's very firmly established in the very beginning that Eclipso is going to use Starman to ingratiate himself into the superhero community to lure them to their own defeats. And so he does throughout other annuals. Annuals where writers are willing to play ball, unlike writers who wrote things like the demon tie-in which has virtually nothing to do with this event. I'm surprised that Starman wasn't just like handing out little black diamonds left and right. I agree. No. Like putting them in hey, people's clothes, he, slipping into their food. He is doing that. Like uh, not like slipping it in their food and stuff, but like I believe he eats the diamond. Yeah, like he, he eats it. And so that's how it's like, because it's part of him, he's able to do what he's able to do. But um, he is like luring heroes to getting diamonds or to going places where they will get diamonds. Because of course, it wouldn't be a Machiavellian supervillain without a ridiculously circuitous scheme. <laughs> it's not just a, like, he just, he just gets the biggest superhero and then just forces them down and goes, eat a diamond. <laughs> now you're me. <laughs> So is the demon a book at this time? Yes. Oh, it's about Etrigan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who's this pillow man? That's pillow man. 
He's a character? In Etrigan. Ah. Weird. Is, he, is he made of pillows? He is a pillow. He is a pillow. He's been made into a pillow. <laughs> So, so Bruce just disappears. He's, he's out of the book, and you're like, what the crap? But don't worry, because we've got plenty of other Eclipso stuff to go on, like Starman the Mole, oh no. You know, the Justice League. We deal with the Justice League Europe, uh, or Justice League International, who are based out of Europe, and their whole thing, and how stupid and lame they are, and how ineffectual they are as well, and how the Justice League of America won't communicate with the Justice League of Europe. Like... The, the Justice League International, or Justice League of Europe, end up having to deal with the Eclipso problem. But they are not told that there is an Eclipso problem. Uh-huh. Because after the utter like dismantling of the Justice League via Eclipso, and I love how like every single one of these events, from Armageddon 2001 to Doomsday, just pants as the Justice League. <laughs> until like, basically Doomsday is a mercy killing at that point. They're like, all right, <laughs> the Justice League have failed from Armageddon 2001 to Eclipso Darkness Within to Bloodlines. No, so, d- d- just send a monster to effing kill them. I've had enough of these people. I want you to slam Booster Gold's face in a car door. I want you to punch that fire and ice duo in the face. Hit one of them with a rock. Doomsday literally hits one of them with a rock. From far away, it's like, meh. It's just unceremonious. Until finally it ends with Superman dying. You have uh, Hal Jordan and... Wally West. Wally West. Yes. That are both... uh, Taken over by Eclipse. That's right. Nice. I'm sorry, you've lost. Oh, I know. I, yeah, no. it's over. Oh my God, no. I was like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> in, in in the Hal Jordan one, uh, Hal Jordan becomes an Eclipse monster. Uh, in the Flash one, Mark Wade writes that, and he has you could feel the disdain. <laughs> like he's happy to work within it. Dude wrote Lazarus Planet, which is a most recent DC Comics event that was entirely dictated by editorial. Literally, Mark Wade ends up coming back to DC after a long hiatus, and they're like, hey, um, we need to whip up an event for this thing. Uh, it's called Lazarus something. You're doing a book about uh, how the Lazar- there's, a, there's a Lazarus Island, uh, uh, and there's like a volcano. Uh, make it erupt and like uh, hit the whole world. Just do one of these. Like, do that thing. Remember that thing you did like 31 years ago? Mm-hmm. Do that again, but like more, but, but with less money behind the marketing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, sure. Whatever you want, and did. So like, I don't know where his integrity comes from with this Flash book where he's, <laughs> but I don't know where this, where, where, where the, but with, but with the Flash, maybe it's because he likes the Flash and he's like caring about what he's doing with this. Whereas Lazarus Planet, it's like, it's not, it's not called anything but Lazarus Planet. Just do whatever, I don't care. Yeah. I'll, I'll do something that means something in World's Finest. But with the Flash, he's like, I don't know. Oh boy, we got some Rob Liefeld stuff going on with oh, the art here. This one is especially egregious. Yeah, the Flash one really suffers um, from from image envy. Yeah. Oh uh, my god. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Now in this one, the uh, the Who rogues is this that is. I don't. Is I think it's Mirror Cold? Master. Oh, no, okay. it's Captain Cold. There's the Trickster. I think Mirror Master's in this one. Uh, but yeah, I think it's Captain Cold. Okay. Uh, Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. Yeah, um, yeah, but uh, Wally gets the 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 diamond. Uh, that's really what matters in the right, story. Right, right. You know, like the the it's rogues. A, the story's just a vehicle for him to end up with the diamond. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's what they all are, right? I mean, really, for yeah. the most part. Yeah. yeah. What's funny is every single one of these things ends where they go, uh, "Oh no!" and then goes, "We'll pick this up later." But in two of them, they just go, uh, "The end." Huh. Etrigan, we wrapped it up, we're done. They're like, uh, and, and, and he won't be in the other ones. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the end of this story. It's not just a tie-in. Eat me. <laughs> uh, they they said well I said, had to do yeah, this. Yeah, it, it might as well have had no credits on it. Like Alan yeah. Grant and Joe Phillips are like, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> that's my name. Print it. <laughs> I was forced into this. I was held at gunpoint. Never mind the fact that Alan Grant and Joe Phillips wrote all the Batman ones. This is going back a second. Please. But something I, I don't know if you mentioned in the Lois Lane turning into Eclipse one. Yeah. Is that all that shit happens to her. They spill coffee on her. Uh-huh. And, they, and then the thing oh. that causes her to turn into Eclipse. Eclipse though. The thing Eclipse that really though, takes over. Yes. Is yeah. Superman grabs her. Is like, we have to get out of here. Like, it's not safe. Yeah. And she's, she's like, like, don't condescend to me. 
and then she flips out. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, that's we get to the car, we get to the like, car job is just as important as yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She has deep. He's like, there's no time to explain. There's never time to explain. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm always playing second fiddle to you, Clark. Exactly. Yeah, you know, like, I, I've been I've been Lois Laning well before Superman showed up. I named you, motherfucker. She's just, she's just going on a rant at him. <laughs> like, if something's going on here, I've got a right to know. And furthermore, <laughs> and when she says, and furthermore, Clark's like, oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, oh no, because he knows he's gonna have to sleep a night in the Fortress of Solitude. <laughs> AKA the couch. Yep. Fart, right. gender roles. <laughs> Okay, so Hal's on the outs with Carol. Uh, Carol gets the diamond because she's upset that she might become a Star Sapphire again. So she becomes like an evil Eclipso Star Sapphire. Oh. Hal fights her. He gets the diamond. He becomes an Eclipso. Flash uh, has to fight the rogues. The rogues have like a whole plan. The trickster's being an idiot. And then Flash like, uh, uh and then uh, another member of the rogues becomes a Eclipso. And then he gets the diamond and he becomes an Eclipso. Moving on. Uh, mm -hmm. Hawkman and Hawkwoman. Uh, Hawkwoman becomes an Eclipso. Hawkman fights her. He loses, she gets away. And these are the books, folks. You know, Deathstroke the Terminator, I don't even want to get into it. Because <laughs> Deathstroke is also a pitch for a Deathstroke book. They're like, first, first issue of Deathstroke, folks. So it's it's a straight up die in the world Deathstroke story that has virtually nothing to do with the Eclipse of Diamonds. Yeah, it's international terrorism. It, there's a there's espionage. There's a secret city under New York. Yeah, <laughs> Salvation. <laughs> What? Yeah, not unlike it's, a it's secret- It's because you salvage things from New York. That's right, yeah. Not unlike a secret city underneath uh, San Francisco <laughs> in the Marvel Universe. But <laughs> unfortunately, the gas there are no horse and buggies and stuff. Uh, Here, Ethan, damn. gaze upon salvaging. <laughs> I gotta see this. Yeah. What? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of like a tent city. Yeah, it's like tents yeah. and piles Where of would cars? this be? You know, underground. <laughs> Deathstroke gets a diamond. Moving on. Uh, but it does immediately dovetail into oh, New Nightwing's Titans. Oh, here too. Yeah, well, because he's like Slade Wilson's number one antagonist. Uh. Uh, although they are working together because we're trying to get Deathstroke working. Like, we want to get him, oh. you know, let's-, let's Yeah, get, gotta get him away from the villain aspect. Well, get, right. him, get him past the, like, child bride stuff <laughs> that he had before that. You know, like, right. forgot about he's that. He's got to be a little bit redeemable. We got to try and redeem him a little bit, even though he's a murderer and like a rapist. <laughs> so we have him team up with Nightwing, obviously, so we can establish that, like, you know, Nightwing's pretty cool. Uh, in right. a, I believe, Wonder Woman story, there's a police captain who he becomes an Eclipso, and then uh, he shows up in the Deathstroke book later. You know, it's just, these are, these are where the diamonds come from. He goes right. into police impound, gets the diamond. Right. There's an explanation for all these diamonds. Uh, yes. We can trace every single one of these diamonds. Almost. Right. Who the hell is that? That is Panther. And Panther is a member of the New Titans. Also, uh, in War of the Gods, Wally West makes fun of her. Uh, huh. Yeah, the New Titans are dealing with a cyborg problem. Like, cyborg's broken and they need to fix them. And who cares? Not that, you know, who cares about cyborg, but it has nothing to do with Eclipso. Yeah, look at all that crap coming off of them. All those yeah. cables that they're plugged in. Uh, I know, I love it. Cables. That's that's, uh, that's George Perez art. It's really fun. It's like, oh man! And then you see, like, George Perez, like, hands off art duty. You're like, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, um, Red Star, a, like, Russian plant on the New Titans, becomes the Eclipso of the Titans because, of course, every book has to have an Eclipso in it. And Red Star is the Eclipso. Of oh, that's Red Star. I was looking at the bear. Yes. That oh, wait, is, that's Beast Boy. That's, that's just uh, back then called Changeling. But yes, Beast Boy is the bear. Uh, so I was like, man, they have a bear? <laughs> Crazy stuff going on. That should be the Russian one. Uh, but yeah, in Justice League uh, International, you know, the League is trying to deal with it and they, they don't know what to do and they're calling Maxwell Lord because Maxwell Lord was their liaison through the UN and Maxwell Lord like won't tell them because they don't want like word to get out that, oh, because Superman, ultimately ends up, you know how like the town was Eclipsoed uh -huh. during the Lois Lane battle? Eclipso never released them. And so Superman's like, I'm just kind of like dealing with this on a case by case basis, but I want to save that town. So oh, right. he tells the league, like I'm going to the town and I'm going to give myself to Eclipso and, and he'll give me his word that he'll release the town. Because I know he wants me the most. Okay. And they're like, what a fucking horrible idea. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and he's like, I know, but I don't have any more ideas. These are the ideas. It's, and so that, we well, got. that's why I'm telling you. You know, normally I just do it myself. 
but I'm going to tell you guys. So he does. And the Titans are like, that's a horrible idea. That's but they have an insurance policy. And they, the idea is that, like, I'm going to give myself over to Eclipso. He'll free the town, which has no bearing on the story. And then you guys will save me. <laughs> which Save you. Which <laughs> is a, a, a terrible insurance policy yeah. when you think about the doomsday problem. Uh, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Starfire becomes an Eclipso. Oh, Moving on. Yeah. Uh, oh, a bunch so, of them do. Oh, so Superman gets Eclipsoed. Oh, and, and he does? Yeah. Well, obviously, he takes the diamond. And he's like, oh, I'm so mad. Cause, uh, he's, and he gets mad because um, Eclipso's like, no, I'm not going to release the people. Hmm. And he's like, oh! <laughs> No, I really thought you would, though. <laughs> that makes me so mad. So then he becomes a Eclipso. <laughs> you what? lied? Yeah, and then the Titans dispatch Captain Marvel. Oh. And they beat the holy hell out of each other. Meanwhile, uh, while that happens, you know, Captain Marvel's like, Superman, please! And Superman's like, I'm Eclipso. I'm Eclipso, don't call me that. That's Eclipso's not... like, stop talking to me, Superman. <laughs> That's not my name, man. And so uh, there's a big holy fight in which Captain Marvel gets that, his ass kicked. Is that this one? Yeah, and Superman leaves, and Eclipso has him. Whoops. <laughs> this is not going well. Right. Okay. Now, it's you say Superman, but it looks like Bizarro, given the colors. Well, only because of the colors. I see. So he changes colors. Well, everyone changes colors when they get right. Eclipso. Right, and he happens to look like Bizarro. Right? Because... Like, even uh, look, Power Girl becomes Eclipso. Power Girl's mad because she's always mad, and she gets Eclipsoed, and they fight her, and... Uh, uh, she gets away, and uh, Dr. Light, Kimio Hoshi, she's a doctor, and also she has like light powers, like solar light powers. She gets flashed, as does Kilowog of the Green Lantern Corps. Oh boy. Because he was there to help them out, because right. he was like, hey, I'm gonna tell you what's going on even though I shouldn't. And uh, so they try to get, that is to say the Eclipsos try to get Aquaman, because he's like essential to their plan. He's mm -hmm. not, by the way. Oh. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> They kick his ass and they take him with them. So Power Girl and Aquaman leave with uh, Hal Jordan and the Flash. Oh boy. Um, oh, the heroes are going down left and right here. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, How are they going to get out of this one? Good question. Who's going to save the day? It's funny you should say that because that comes up at least two times in the end of the book. Oh. At, in the last issue, uh, Aquaman shows up and catches some, some, some citizens. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember which character goes, Aquaman, you saved the day! And then later, another character will do something heroic, and someone else will go, you saved the day! And I'm like, hey, uh, there's only one day. Right. And it was already saved. It was already saved. You can't save the same day what again. What if the day falls into disrepair again? <laughs> That's right. right. Well, and it does. You resaved the day. Right. Uh, Guy Gardner grabbed solar matter and dumped it on Superman yes. to free him. Yeah. Oh. I thought it was lava at first, and then I read the words, That's and right. I got very angry. No, because Superman has to hide from the League because when the sun is out, he is, that is to say, Eclipso, right. is at diminished capacity. And so the, uh, Eclipso forces Superman to hide in an active volcano. Because like everyone, once Superman falls, they're like, we gotta find Superman and un-Eclipso him. Right. Uh, so he's hiding in a volcano, they ultimately find him, the League's both leagues and heroes uh, adjacent fight Superman and lose. Guy Gardner shows up and they laugh at him and then he leaves and then he comes back with like a scoop of sun <laughs> and a dump sun on Superman. See, Ethan, look, this is this is solar matter. Okay. So yeah, that's... That's not what's in the sun. So Superman <laughs> and Guy Gardner battle while covered in solar matter and then fall into the volcano. Not only do they battle it, uh, Guy Gardner grabs some and rubs Superman's <laughs> face in it. That's right. Well, because, Like you he's know, a bad dog. Well, Guy Gardner has some unresolved issues when it comes to Superman. You know, like, Ice. Guy Gardner's in love with her, but she wants to bang Superman. Right. You know, what's that gonna... <laughs> how's that gonna pay off? Yeah, nobody's gonna end up happy then. No, because Superman's never gonna bang you and right. Guy Gardner sucks. So, uh, yeah, that does do the trick, by the way. Uh, the pieces but, of the sun. Yeah, the, well, the, the sun dumping. And so, uh, you know, yeah, they're like, all it's right. okay, he still has a lot of people you, on his side. Uh, yeah. So, nobody cares, but the sun is just a big ball of hydrogen. Right, you can't collect and sun matter. And if you did... What makes it the sun is that it's under like intense pressure. Right. Once you removed it from that pressure, if you weren't able to do that, which right, you can. it wouldn't be the sun anymore. No. Yeah, it's not like it's a <laughs> ball of like boiling oil. No. It, it, <laughs> it's a ball of plasma, which is hydrogen. Which, yeah. And if you take it away, it's just 
it dissipates. Hydrogen again. Yeah, and it won't have all the energy that it had. So. No, especially because you have to travel from the sun back to Earth. Yeah. Like in that time. But, but Ethan, I don't understand. If there's no magma that I can grab from the sun, how am right. I going to dump it on Superman? Right. Well, it's like how would we transport a piece of it in order to solve free this problem? Free Superman, even though all we needed to do was bring him above sky level and the sun's there waiting for him. Yeah, or hit him with like that toy that Batman used. Yeah. Oh, right. That solar sword. Like, once you establish that, like, a child's toy can, can like, defeat solve him? the problem. Or a flashlight. A, yeah. Or a flashlight that's just powered in a certain way. Like, mm -hmm. it kind of, like, removes... It, it makes all these, like, other methods of doing it, like, <laughs> ludicrous. Yes. Like, why would you try to so hard to go to the fucking sun? I, I mean... I guess because I guess Guy Gardner's a tryhard. You're stupid. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what would be amazing is if he showed up and go, Don't worry, guys! I scooped up some of the sun! Oh no! Oh, there's nothing here. What? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just dies laughing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So then the, there's another issue the, with Legion. Uh, there's a space team. They they, they play uh, a major factor in the Bloodline story. Mm. They're led by Vril Dox, aka Brainiac, or a version of Brainiac. Right. Uh, they show up on Earth and they're like, "Hey, we're a spacefaring team, and we are here to help out with the Alexa, uh, Eclipso problem." And uh, and also Lobo's there, and people are like, Lobo's on your team? But he's an asshole. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, he fought uh, Starman. Yeah, he did fight Starman. But we didn't get to see that. That happened on the moon or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the Legion are there too. And that, that, that's all that matters to them. Uh, but yeah, so the uh, Eclipso lures the heroes by sending his heroes, like his team, uh, to a crater in Arizona uh, to fight. And so everyone um, does. A crater? Yeah, there's a crater yeah. in Arizona or whatever that like, does, the, the Eclipse like picks as his final destination, even though it's not, he really wants to get them on the moon because once he gets them on the moon, then he has the most power because of course he's moon based or whatever. Uh, but, because uh, you know, Eclipso. Yep. But, um, he also knows that they're not just gonna listen to him, so he has to need, he needs Starman to be like, yeah, we should go to the moon, yeah, let's go fight him on the moon. <laughs> but uh, he needs to like make it really hard for them, so. They fight in the crater first. And it needs to be their idea. It needs to accept them. So, uh, Eclipso like fires a big beam and sends his, 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 his cadre of heroes to the moon uh, where he proceeds to like hatch his scheme of, yeah, I'm going to kill all the heroes and rule. Remember, right. first issue? Right. Um, also, uh, throughout every book, almost every book, except for like Demon and Flash and stuff, uh, occasionally, it, we'll cut to Eclipso in his cathedral, and uh, Valor will be standing there, having been Eclipsoed, uh -huh. and he'll be like, "I've got you, <laughs> ho ho! Right. I got you. With oh, the I'm gonna do stuff with you." And I'm like, "Okay, all right, sure." <laughs> uh, so the the Legion and the heroes all team up, and they're like, "All right, well, spacefaring heroes will get in. One, like the Legion will carry one uh, one sp spaceship of heroes." And then the League will get the other uh, spaceship and we'll both go to the moon and we're gonna kill Eclipso. Why couldn't we all just get on your ship, Legion? Mm, because we need for one of the ships to take a vote and go, I don't wanna kill him, huh. killing's wrong. Oh. Which of course they do. Uh, Vril Dox has no patience for that shit, but whatever. Uh. Meanwhile, in the cathedral, Eclipso is like, I need a strategy to defeat these heroes. Because you know, even though I'm winning, I don't right. have all of them. Right. Well, yeah, I lost Superman. Yeah. Slade Wilson is a master strategist. So then he proceeds to absorb Deathstroke in a series of gross sound effects, Ooh. which suggests that he is like deconstructed like a chicken wing and incorporated into his body. He isn't because he does that to all the heroes and they are not dead. But if we don't free them soon, they will be. By incorporating him, he like gains his knowledge and powers? Yes. He gets more powerful, he gets bigger, and he learns all the shit he knows. Huh. Which is a power he didn't even know he had, but now he does. So this was <laughs> not his plan. This is and now his, his plan. plan. <laughs> oh yeah, let me try something real quick. <laughs> cool! Okay. Oh sweet, I can do that. All right, new plan. <laughs> Be that. Right. So. Okay. So he proceeds to incorporate as many of the heroes as he, ha as, he, as he could get in a big gross sequence, which I think is pretty fun. Oh my God. It's not as gross as Bloodlines. <laughs> no. So Eclipso's like, oh hey, Largan, now you can do something. 
Mm -hmm. So he dispatches, or, I mean, like, the reality is, like, he is Largan. So, like, he sends right. Largan out. Right, right. To attack the incoming ships, which he does. So the heroes have to abandon ship, and then they land on the moon. Some of them have space suits. Those Others are, are protected by, suits. yeah. Have space suits. Right, others yeah. are protected by, like, force fields and stuff. Right. Um, Where did they get the space suits? The uh, Legion. They're space-faring oh, heroes, right. so they, they have, have, yeah. they have, they they have, have a bunch suits. of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they got a bunch. You never know where you're going to pick up hitchhikers in space. I mean, yeah. I mean, if Lobo's any indication, dude's, like, literally driving a motorcycle in open air. Exactly. Motorists. Yeah. But apparently there are just the people with, like, just the American, you know, like, highway system. Yes. There are people with space, space rest stops. Just yes. their thumbs out. Right, yeah. come on. They got, like, one, they got, like, a fishbowl over their head. Come on. Run out of air. Need this. <laughs> Oh, so Starman's like, we should go to the moon. And they're like, yeah, okay, dude, we're going to the moon. So they go to the moon, mm -hmm. and then they get into the cathedral, and then Starman's like, it was me! And they're like, Starman, <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's a trap. Oh, come on. Oh, man. You were tricking us the whole time by changing how you look in your voice? <laughs> yes. And, because they're in the cathedral now, like, they're basically in a diamond. It's not, but, like, you yeah, know, might as well be. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, and I bet you're so mad that you were betrayed that you all want to be Eclipsos now. <laughs> I bet you're right. all really angry. We and are! I'll get the rest of you right now. Yeah, but he, he doesn't, but he's like, and he's like slurping towards them, like oh. as he's incorporated everybody. He's like, yeah! yeah but they're like, there are pieces sticking out. This I isn't know. just him being big. Is this, this is him being an Akira monster. I yeah. know, it's horrible. How is this better? He seems like slower <laughs> and more awkward. Oh, don't worry, he'll get, he'll he'll, he'll find his, 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 his bearings. Oh, I see. But uh, But he's like, hey, before I kill all of you, I need to know like, where's Bruce Gordon? Remember Bruce Gordon? The guy I hate the most? Who disappeared? Where the hell is he? Why isn't he with you? I figured he would be. He was in most of the Superman books. How come he's not there now? Wait a minute. I incorporated Mona, his woman. So he poops her out. And he's like, and I've removed all of myself so you can have all your bearings and you can answer my question, where the hell's Bruce? Right. Which he does. And he's like, okay, you won't tell me. I guess I'll kill you. And that's when Bruce Gordon appears uh, wielding technology that he built with all the super scientists and Superman that were stolen throughout the series. That big like flash that happened to Blue Beetle and characters, including Superman, that was Bruce Gordon and company kidnapping scientists to join with him so they could build anti-Eclipsa weaponry. And the reason why they were bathed in light is because he couldn't trust whether they were Eclipso or not. Oh, so they, they needed to be with hit light with light first, first in order right. to, which is why it needed to be mysterious throughout the book. Right. And I'm like, that's why it was a flash. I like that. Yeah. I don't yeah. like it, but I like it. I mean, I don't like that the point was to build guns so we can do a big image thing where they have these big guns but at least they're not no they're not these are they're flashlights they're they're uh, ghostbusters okay. i mean yeah, look at that busters. like yeah. yeah that's true yeah i like the fact that they at least pay it off exactly yeah there was a plan it was executed it makes sense right it's not immediately obvious nor is it immediately dispatched yeah where he's like he's like i've got this big device and then they smash it and he's like oh no and then like right. the power of the human heart will persist <laughs> yeah then the that's where the away. true light lives <laughs> right Yes, which is basically the end of Maximum Carnage. <laughs> yes. So uh, they they now they fight and like you know Largan who is like basically you know other Superman he fights Superman mm -hmm. and so they have to be, have a big fight outside because otherwise we destroy everything and that way they can have a big fight and it'll be fun. Hey, have a big fight, but take it outside. I don't want my cathedral broken. Exactly. So right. all the why heroes. Does Superman have a flashlight that he can hit Largan with. Uh, Largan he... catches him off guard. Ah, I see. Yeah, Superman doesn't have the flashlight. They, uh, they all like, I'm do. Superman, I don't need it. Uh, yes. So he uh, suplexes Largan and then joins the fray. All the heroes are freed of Eclipso. So yay. They, oh, they, they do it. They just do it? Well, yeah, they well, in a, in, a, stuff. in a big whole sequence. Yeah, a big montage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a big fight, but yeah. like, you know, they, they are freed. And it's, and it's the heroes themselves. There's only so many of them. It's not like they took over a town and we're going to see every single goddamn person. Right. Uh, you know, we, we can see every hero from here. As they Did they bring a whole lot of, like, extra kits? So, like, as they free each one, they're like, here, and they toss no! it off and then they use it. And, no, you know, that'd no. Be fun. I agree. That'd be really fun. Not enough pages. Yeah. So... Superman brings in the unconscious body of Largan, and he's like, hey, and he's still half Eclipso. And I'm Eclipso, sorry, I had to punch him into unconsciousness. Yeah, and so Eclipso pops out of a wall, and he's like, woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo! <laughs> now I'll defeat you! You'll but never find me! How? We just freed all our heroes. We're more powerful than ever now. It's literally what, like, Panther says. She's like, yeah, right. We're all gonna beat you. Then Bruce Gordon goes, 
no, he's right. Everybody got. We got to get out of here. And so Eclipso starts caving in the cathedral. Oh. So you can breathe in here, but you can't out there. And also, this thing's gonna fall on you. So he starts destroying the cathedral. Everyone that came here that couldn't breathe had a spacesuit. What happened no, to no, no, them? No, some of them did. Went inside. Exactly. Yeah. Some of them had spacesuits, but others were like protected by like Green Lantern energy and stuff, which of course they are now. Uh, but yeah, so they're, 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 the 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 building starts to cave in. Everyone has to make a hasty retreat. Uh, Bruce Gordon's like, I'm not leaving until we ice Eclipso. He's got to die. Right. But He's too dangerous to be left alive. Exactly. Right. So uh, he's about, so he tricks everybody into going and sa saving people so he can like do a suicide mission. Right. And because uh, he's got one big solar bomb that he's going to set off. Mm. And he even admits like, this may not kill Eclipso, but he'll remember me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he'll remember you because like you're intrinsically connected to his origins, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but then Starman shows up and he's like, hey man, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm going to go kill Eclipso. And he's like, I'm going to help you because Eclipso made me into a chump. Right. right, he made you this bitch. That's right. I don't care for that. <laughs> so then everyone goes outside, and then Eclipso proceeds to get huge. <laughs> <laughs> he gets ripped. He gets, no, I mean he gets big. <laughs> like, he gets tall. Ah. And he's like, ho, ho, because one of the characters is like, that's it, everybody, we're going to get out of here. Everyone's going home alive. And then Eclipso gets big and goes, nobody's going home alive. And I'm like, all right. Well, okay, that's, that's a weird... Not really Nobody goes home empty-handed. And everybody's going home empty-handed. Nobody goes home a loser. Everyone here is a loser. <laughs> he rips off his stupid costume and goes, my stupid costume sucked because that was what I wore when I pretended to be a supervillain, but really I'm an effing god. And they're like, whoa. Oh. I guess that was established. So, so he can just get big? Yeah, it turns out he could always get big. Why wasn't this always his plan? Why did he just go Why to Earth? Why did he need those superheroes at all? Why? Because then there wouldn't have been 27 parts. Because if he got that big on Earth, at some point he would hit the sun. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's why a lot of it takes place on the East Coast. Because like it was like nighttime over there, you know? <laughs> so Bruce plants the bomb with Starman's assistance. And then Bruce is like, I need more time to arm the device. And I'm like, why? Because Starman is like, I'm going to run interference. So then he goes and he fights Eclipso himself. And then, and then for no reason, Starman also reiterates, he goes, I don't know if you can hear me, but one thing's for sure, you're never gonna forget me. And I'm like, that's what Bruce said earlier. What, what, what are you repeating yourself for? Like, I get it. Well, is that, that, the, that's the theme of the that's book. The theme, you're never gonna forget you're me. You're never gonna forget. Like, you never may forget. die, but you, your immortality will be in not in being forgotten. Like, right. what? So then Starman blows himself up to blast Eclipso in half and dies. What? Okay. So Starman's out, and he won't be returned until Scott Snyder's totality story, in which he retcons that actually <laughs> the Eclipso satellite that hits him, that was also retconned to be Eclipso in the first place, that was also a piece of the totality that Scott Snyder invented for his story, for the Justice League book. Sure. Uh, and that's why Starman was returned and resurrected in their story, and then didn't do anything. Uh, so anyway, Eclipso explodes, and his cathedral falls apart, and everyone's like, whoa! Including Blue Devil. Wow. He's also there. <laughs> and he's like, how That's come I didn't great. get an annual? And they're like, because your book was canceled, man. <laughs> so then uh, Bruce Gordon proceeds to uh, you know, arm his device, and he's trying to make his way out, and Eclipso's in there, and he's like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I thought he was blown in half. He was. Oh, this is the top half? Well, no. <laughs> he got small, and he's in the oh, cathedral now. Oh, so his big form got blown in half. Yeah. And so he converted So Starman died essentially form. for nothing. Yes. Well, I guess he... That needed to be happen. That needed to happen so he could be made small. Yes. So that now yes. he can be defeated. Right. More. More. Uh, yeah, I had to blow him in half so that he couldn't be big anymore. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then Eclipso right. fights Bruce because he's like, you know, Bruce's like, hey man, it's too late. I've already armed the device. It's gonna blow up. And he's like, that's fine. I don't care as long as you come with me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so then he, so he starts wailing on Bruce. Like he's punching him like he's a dude. Oh, I just geez. hate you. Um, <laughs> Largan feels Eclipso inside his head like Picard in First Contact <laughs> and is like, I can hear him talking. And then proceeds to go into the wreckage of the cathedral to rescue Bruce, which he does. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, so it explodes, seemingly killing Eclipso, and Largan is like, I don't hear his thoughts in my head anymore. I'm free. Hooray. That plot device that was invented three pages ago is now over. <laughs> but it isn't. There's a great moment, uh, speaking of Guy Gardner, in which Guy Gardner goes, whoa, that was a big explosion. And everyone goes, shut up. <laughs> That's great. Shut, Shut up, up, Guy Gardner. Shut up, Guy Gardner. Nobody likes you. <laughs> so then Vril Dog's like, I'm leaving. Uh, literally. And they're like, we don't care. Bye. 
Bye. I hope you all get killed by spine-sucking xenomorph monsters in Bloodlines. <laughs> so Mona and Professor Bennett, her dad, uh, meet up with Bruce, and they're like, oh, the gang's all here. Like, oh so the second's God. also there. It's like, good eye. And then, I'm here too. And then we establish that uh, there's still one black diamond. Oh, yeah, because he pushed all the black diamonds together to make one big diamond. Oh. Uh, that didn't matter. Uh, but there's one black diamond still on the surface of the moon. Mm. And they rip off uh, Winston Churchill and say that this is the end of the beginning. And that there is, and they, they by the way, they, they, they rip off Conrad and uh, Shakespeare. They're all in the yeah, first I issue, saw but. The Shakespeare reference. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, really? Seriously? I mean, Churchill, fine. You know what? He was yeah. kind of an asshole anyway. But uh, yeah, so then uh, Eclipso then says to the reader, I've got a book coming out. Hopefully you buy it. Oh my God. The answer's no. Yeah. And, but it, uh, I bet it's way less like epic than this. I mean, yeah. But right? also it isn't. He's like, but no, it, but it isn't because it is and it isn't because at the end, like Eclipso fights the Spectre. Like oh, both okay. spirits of vengeance fight each other. All right. So you could argue that this did build toward that. Yes. It was the it, it, beginning of, of a new saga. It was the beginning of the last issue of Eclipso series because that is what happens in the last issue when the the book gets canceled. They're like, All right. oh, yeah. the Spectre fights in the end. Of course it does. So there is an Eclipso book though. Yes. Yes. Interesting. There is a solo series that would have kept going if anyone bought it. Uh, but it did get, I think, That's 13 issues. tough. That's a book about a bad guy. That's I know. Hard to do. No, it's about Bruce and Eclipse. Oh, okay. But we get a little bit of a post credit scenes with Valor. Because, of course, oh, yeah. you know, Largan, we got to get him working. We did. How about this book? Right. He Starring Largan. Yeah, you Maybe want it? Right? Launch a new title. Yeah. So Largan is plagued with. PTSD from his experience being captive by Eclipso. Sure. Hey, at least you didn't blow up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he could have been Starman and died. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's got survivor's guilt. He does, uh, and he's forced by like Luther and his like psychiatrists to undergo an evaluation. And it's funny because oh. like all the ink blots are deliberately made to make him think of things that Eclipso did, and so he does, but he lies about it anyway, and then. <laughs> There's like a real ink blot in there, and that reminds him of his father. And we're like, "What?" And then we're gonna be like, "Oh, we're gonna tell you about like about Largan's past and his dad, and how his dad was like a workaholic and stuff." And his, I'm like, "His Dolomite dad." Yeah, and I'm like, "Daxmite." Daxmite. He's like, "Who cares?" <laughs> this is where we're revealing Eclipso's got more plans. But like Eclipso throws in the diamond. He's like, "You're mine." And then Valor's like, "No, I've I've conquered your demons. I I don't need to worry about you anymore." I see. Uh, and then the sun comes up, and he he evaporates, and he's like, "Maybe my dad was a dipshit." And so he smashes the city that was built, presumably by Eclipso. Uh -huh. And uh, do you want to read more Valor? No, not even a little. That's weird. I know, but I had to give it to you because it's, it's super it weird. Technically, is part of the ongoing Eclipso: The Darkness Within saga. What would episode or book two be about? It was just now we're dealing with we're we're, we're purged of the Eclipso stuff. We were purged at the end of the book. <laughs> no, but like here's the last. Now you're really purged. Yeah, but you got to get some closure on Valor and yeah. what he feels about what happened. Yeah, because in issue two, uh, Superman says that he fought with Valor. Ah. You see, he was just Largan before. I see. But now he's Valor because Superman named him. Kind of. It's too yeah, bad. You still fought the same person. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad he looks like such a goober. Like, what is with this costume? I know, I know. It's, it's a Superman costume. It's a Superman costume. It's like a Superman slash Thor costume. Yes. He's got the big thing. The big buttons. They, they look horrible. And so there you have it. Eclipse of the Darkness Within. It is a massive event. There are no true standouts. I, 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 sometimes there's like one issue that's really fun, like in Bloodlines. I mean, apparently I love the introduction of Razor Sharp. The <laughs> Batman stuff had three freaking books. Three, three chapters, all of them dealing with Joker stole $25 million off screen. Here's us paying that off. Is that worth anything because of that diamond? Nope. <laughs> no, most people hate it. Actually reduces the value. Yeah, Clay. Oh no. Oh no, I'm being possessed by oh, no. oh. I'm so angry at hearing this story. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh. oh no, you just threw up. You just off. threw up on me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh no, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Not in the comics, get away! Oh! Now I'm angry. <laughs> See, it's just a bad cycle. Yes, yeah. because I have the diamond now. Oh boy. Eclipse of the Darkness Within. I wish that they could replicate the diamond thing if they were to make a republication of this, but like, there's no way. Uh, this must have been a it, nightmare. If they yeah. did a hardcover, you could embed it in the hardcover, right, and that would be fine. Oh. I think collectors would hate it. 
Yeah. I think for the same reason they hate it now, where they're like, I try to put it in my long boxes and it slides in and it catches. No, no, no. You embed it in the hard yeah, cover. Yeah, so there's oh. no lift. It's the, it's the same Hell, you can do it so that it's cover. actually a cutout. Like it's a die and cut? And you can see through it? I kind of like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I but that I'm, that means that this gets a hard cover, and I am firmly yeah, against no, that. No, make an omnibus. I think it should be. I think you make an omnibus. Of all these yeah, things. Just a straight up omnibus. Yeah, just boom. Yeah, you don't need to make like a like eight part trade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, give us your phone. We got to listen to L.A. Guns. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, so L.A. Guns is basically just in the background of any '80s action movie. Like it's it's played in a bar or a character's riding a motorcycle and that, mm -hmm. that will play. That's only if you're trying to save your budget you know, for the special effects and stuff. Obviously someone is going to explode or be covered in acid and stuff. You gotta <laughs> save the budget for that. So you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not getting like Motley Crue or anything. I'm gonna get- LA Guns. LA Guns. I'm gonna rip a song from Hollywood Vampires. Uh, by the way, if uh, LA Guns wants to uh, comment, I know that you have uh, 51,000 subscribers on YouTube, so, you know, if you want to collab, shoot us a message. I am looking for a theme song for back issues. Oh. If LA Guns wants Ooh. to throw their hat into the ring, That'd I'm be game. Dope, actually. I think so. Give me a friggin' 80s power ballad for back issues. Yeah, we can be cocked and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an omnibus. Give me three omnibuses. <laughs> Armageddon 2001, Eclipse of the Darkness Within, Bloodlines. Complete the trilogy. We've done it. Now, we did it out of order. But we've completed the trilogy of early 90s DC Comics <laughs> annual events. As, does anybody else consider that a trilogy or is it just you? Is that the thing I you mean, made up or do people It is absolutely that? what I just made up. Oh, okay. But, okay. but it is. Right. It is undisputedly a right. trilogy. There is a beginning and an end to it. Uh, they, they, no, they, they, don't, don't, they don't connect in any way. No, but they don't do that anymore after that. Right, right? no. Like, there aren't any more. Right. There aren't any more. These are, these are they. So yeah. they're standalones. Standalone events. It's, a, yeah. it's like a triptych. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's a kind of no. Even a triptych, did. I think, connects. Well, it's theming. You know, like they they, they did, it was an initiative. They did it. Yeah. And now, no, they're like, yeah, we don't the, do that. The anymore. theming we was every single annual. Yes. Yes. <laughs> every one of them. And yeah. two issues, a beginning and an end right. of the self-titled series. Yep. So you know they had a formula that they followed for three years. Yes. And then they yeah, threw it away. It yeah, and people said, please stop this. Because <laughs> well, you did bloodline. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, now, uh, out of the three, which is the best? I think this one's the best. I think Eclipse of the Darkness Within, hands down. Yeah. There's nothing egregious about it. It's not like insane. Like it makes sense. It doesn't invent a new villain. No. It reinvents an old villain. I don't yep. remember Armageddon 2001 all that well. Yeah, it, it okay. So that's the one where like, from the, it invents Wave Rider. There's a dude from the future named Monarch. He is going to become the Monarch of that world and take and plunge yeah. everything into darkness. Oh, and they, it the got one. leaked about who it was going to be, yeah, they and then they're just like, they oh, now somebody else. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they didn't get cold feet with what was going to happen with Eclipse, though. No, Probably because it's not derivative of other things. Yeah, that's true. Bloodlines obviously is. Yeah. And Bloodlines also shamelessly attempts to shove a bunch of new characters oh. in your face and go, yeah. you gotta you gotta admit, the, the new bloods are cool. It's like, I do not have to admit <laughs> no, that. No, I'm not admitting that at all. Yeah, what, no. We only on. get one merch Come on, come on. Up top, come on. It, no, <laughs> get no, away stop. from me. Come on. And it's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, Eclipso. This is just, it's just not good. Yeah. But it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it. it's unruly, but yeah. it also, it, even then, it doesn't really go off the rails yeah, and over the, 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 the span of the book, the books themselves go off the rails a little bit within their own space. They don't like a spill bit, yeah. over and ruin anything. But, it, but it's like, I mean, they came up with a good concept for doing this because the idea of a character being corrupted by someone whose goal is to corrupt as many of them as possible and yes. use them for his own, like it's inherently logical. Whoa, yes. Whoa. I can't corrupt as many as possible. I can only corrupt up to a thousand. <laughs> well, that's right, I only have a thousand shards. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like I can corrupt the world. No, yeah. but I can destroy it with a thousand superheroes. Do we have a thousand of them? Probably, right? Mm, it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> Especially when they, all, when they all get together. You get one of those big splash pages. Oh my God. They're all just there. Yeah, and you're like, all right, yeah, I can name like 12 of these guys, but then like, ooh, Silver Fox, what the hell's her name? I'm sorry, Panther, is it? But yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think it's nice. And it, we, we capped it off by doing the second of the trilogy, mm -hmm. but arguably the best. But let us know what you think in the comments. If you've ever read Eclipso, if not, demand that DC make an omnibus because I think we need them. You need, you can't run away from your past. You gotta own it. Yeah. And if you're gonna own it, you might as well charge for it. Look, do I own it? Yes. Do I want people to read it and remember it? 
Probably not. Well, then it shouldn't be available on the DC app. Tell DC to confront the darkness within <laughs> and create that omnibus. Make those omnibuses. Yeah. I want to see that Bloodlines omnibus. Are you kidding me? And then it'll only uh, usher in a new age. We can get some kind of like restitution. Maybe a, maybe a really cool, refreshing version of a Armageddon 2001. All these ideas are evergreen. I mean, the idea mm. of like an evil moon-based demon that wants to kill everybody, sure, why the hell not? Uh, an evil monarch from the future who wants to be his own father of, or something? Yeah, <laughs> why not? An evil uh, spine-tapping monsters that want to, I don't know, make a kill pool people? of uh, viscera? Uh, you know, it's gross and weird. I think yes. Yeah. Yes. I say yes. 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 All of it. All yes. of it is yes. a triple A tier idea just waiting to be done. I'm waiting for Tom King's Bloodlines. How? <laughs> right? I mean, come on. You know he wrote the hell out of that. How would you make if this into an omnibus? It. Yeah. It's too big. Him. Are you, it would be so... that thick. Well, That's how they're, thick omnibuses there are. There are the omnibuses that are that thick, yeah. Doesn't it break the spine eventually? Yeah. I mean, it's crappy, yeah. Well, yeah, you're not meant to read them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they go on the shelf for people to be impressed by them. Yeah. Just to have them. They become a bludgeoning tool yeah, they are, they to are, kill someone. They are meant to be seen and not read. Yeah. Oh, like children. That's but right. All by children, as I was going to say, by children, right? Right. Because that's, you might give a child an omnibus, like, here, beat the hell out of this thing. Who freaking cares? It's an omnibus. I'll tell you, yeah. No. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. Keep reading. I, I was prepared for this to be much worse. I know. Well, every time I have a stack of dusty old yeah. DC stories from early, the early 90s, it's like, oh, shit. The worst thing this about is it is it's silly. a little bit, it's yeah. a little bit, Bland. It's very bland. They yeah. try to spice it up at the end when he eats them, yeah. and that's where it goes off the rails. It's like, wouldn't that be like, cool if he had done that the whole time? Yeah. Yeah, if he was just amassing people and, right. like, every once in yeah. a while sending someone out to do his bidding. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Instead of it just being, like, a random thing that happens at the end of the book, we're mm -hmm. like, well, that was kind of out of left field. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, but I also think it would have been really cool, and you kind of only get a little bit of it, but they're not, you know why? They're, they're not thinking about it like Marvel would, where it's like, I want to see superhero versus superhero. Like, I want to see, yeah. like, an evil team of heroes yeah. like we see on the cover, like a promise of, like, let's see Wonder Woman fight Superman. Let's see yeah. Batman fight Green Lantern. I mean, within each book, they do fight a little bit. Right, only a little bit, and, and even, there's no tension. Like, I don't yeah. know why. Maybe it's the art. Maybe it's just the fact that, like, you know it has to wrap up, and then yeah. there's no payoff in the next issue, because how could it? But yeah. for whatever reason, I'm just, I feel no tension in any of the battles. Yeah.